good evening. Welcome back to the Little Gardening Show. Tonight we are flash freezing peaches and we're using the food saver machine to vacuum pack the bags so that we have nice yummy peaches for the winter and beyond. So I want to take you along and show you what I'm doing. All right, first things first with peaches. Uh, actually, the girls worked on this today. My wife worked on this. They peeled the peaches. Um, well, I guess they sliced them up peeled them and then put them on baking sheets and flash froze them and they were in the freezer for I don't know how long I think two hours that's what my wife says took a spatula uh, peeled them off the baking sheet so they're ready to go we want to get them you know uh, stored in the bags before they start getting mushy and wet and then you got other issues you're dealing with the reason for flash freezing them instead of just putting them in fresh is that it will make the make it easier to separate them if um, you know we're going to pull some and, and use them easier to separate them and also cleaner to vacuum pack them you don't have to worry about all that liquid seeping up and um, you know, interfering with the seal that the food saver will put on there so that's a little bit about the peaches we got that part ready um, I'll show you what I'm doing with the bags all right so for the bags what I did we already used all the standard ones that came with the food saver machine. I found a website, food, foodvacbags.com. They had, I mean, these bags, they were, came highly reviewed, and um, it's a great deal. Didn't cost that much. I forget how much I paid for them, but uh, I think around 50 bucks, I got two 50-foot rolls of the 8-inch bags, and then I got the, I think, the uh, larger bags um, that are like gallon size. I got two rolls of those. Great deal, you should check this out, foodvacbags.com. They're cheaper than the food saver bags and they work just as well, if not better. Now the only caveat to that is that they come in a big fat roll like this. So it doesn't fit in the machine, like the machine's got a uh, place on the side here, I'll show you. The machine's got this area here where you can tuck a roll of uh, bags in there and then feed them through and use the sealer this it's got two ways to seal bags it's got one here if you're vacuum packing you can seal bags through by putting them in here and then pushing down it seals or you can seal bags by running them through here like i just sealed one here and then um, once you lock this down a little red light comes on where it's doing a little seal process which you can stop it at any time any time by flipping the switch up well, that says I interfered. It's okay. So two downsides with this. One, um, the roll doesn't fit in there. At least 50 foot doesn't. Now maybe like 25 foot once I get it worked down, I can start using that by dispensing it through the place that's uh, provided for here. But I'm not quite there yet. So then what you have to do is manually cut your bags. I'm just eyeballing it here and cutting what I think will work to fit you know about two three peaches in a bag here and I'm having to seal an end on each of these bags so it's going to take me a little while to get enough bags but the peaches again should still be frozen flash frozen and we can deal with that so I'll show you how I go about doing this all right so what I'm going to do is take this, just roll this out, I'm kind of eyeballing it, getting about an 8 or 10 inch bag here, taking my scissors, it's not the prettiest thing but we got a bag, and then what I'm going to do, you kind of have to um, finagle this a little bit. Basically, I want to feed this through like so. And I don't know if you can see, let's see if we can zoom in. There's a little white line that runs here and I put it about a half inch. You can kind of tell, see where the sealer's at. So I put it about three-quarter inch over that line if I'm putting the bags in this way and then I just throw this whole thing back and then flip this lever down 
Now it's sealing the bag. And once that light goes off, the bag's sealed. We'll flip this back. And it looks like I caught the very end of that. So I really... Man, I got that right on the money. So we'll go with that. That's probably a little too close for comfort for me. So we'll do another one just so you can see that whole thing again. So again, I'm kind of coming up under here. Well, let me just take you off the tripod so you can see this. There's a couple grooves here, but there's a groove right here. You can just slide this bag in, and you flip all this over so it come, you know, you can get to the other side of the bag. And again, you can see the white line. And then you can see, you know, back in here is where the sealing action happens. So I'm gonna take this bag. And again, this is a pain. Once I get the the roll worked down. To where I can just use the dispense, I can work it, run the bags through the other way, and it's going to be a lot faster. But it's okay. And I'm doing this one handed, it'd go a lot faster if I was doing this two handed. So this time we're going to go back about, about an inch from that line. So where the line is, there's about an inch of bag going past it. So when I flip this thing down, we're going to pull the trigger down here, or this lever, we're going to push it down. That locks the bag. It's doing its sealing thing. And the thing is, this thing, it gets faster. As it's heating up, it, it gets faster. Pull it out. And that was about right. And this thing, I mean, these bags seal really well. Actually, I could have probably gone three-quarter inch again, and I'd been all right. But that's the gist of it. Another way you can seal these bags instead of going through the bottom and flipping that switch and all that, um, you know, if your roll is too big and you're manually cutting and all that, is you can use the, the vacuum portion of the machine to seal the bags as well. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So again, the vacuum portion's here. Here's a bag that, you know, I cut with the scissors. We're just gonna slip it in here. Gonna make sure it bare, you can see through the viewfinder just that it's the end's barely there and then kind of with your knuckles. You push it to engage but then immediately hit that seal button and it'll start sealing it. You know, because there's nothing to suck, right? It's And there you have it. Now I probably stuck that in a little too far, but like I said, we're not looking for perfection. You know, and I could trim this up if I want, if I don't want that overlap, but again, I really don't care. We can, you know, as long as it's going to seal the food, that's what I'm looking after or looking for. And again, just a really nice seal. These bags, they seal really nice. They work really well with the food saver. So next I'll load one with peaches and show you how we, we seal them up. Alright, so take my bag, I'm going to grab some of these peaches, and again, ideally I would have had all these bags cut and sealed before we even started this process, but it's okay. That's about the right amount, that's probably close to two cups there. Now the, you'll notice that the bag is honeycombed on one side and clear on the other, and that's to help with, um, at least I think, as it's sealing and sucking air out, it's to slow down the liquid so it has a chance to seal, like that liquid's got to work its way through the honeycomb. So I put the honeycomb down, don't know if that really makes a difference or not, I think it probably makes a little difference, but I put it bag side, like down, so that way gravity's helping me. As the liquid's coming up, it's working through the channel there. But I think either way, it probably worked just as fine. So what we're gonna do is lift up the shield. And inside of there, there's a little drip tray. I just make sure the bag is lined up in the middle. 
and kind of hang it over into that drip tray so it's good to go. And then just you gotta push these this right here. Now I kept sucking. I wanted it's tight enough, so I went ahead and just hit the seal button. And you can do that at any point. You can, if it's at where you want it, you don't have to to suck the heck out of it. You can, um, you know, go ahead and and do it. So we get a bag that's pretty well sealed. Let's do one more. Again, we're not being like super accurate with this. I'm just throwing in what looks good. What I think would we'd eat in one setting or do with like pancakes or something. Now that last one, it kept trying to suck us because I kind of put the bag in too far. You want to put it in to where it's like just overlapping that little drip tray. If you go too far, it's going to keep trying to suck air out of it. Now that one's getting a real good pressure there. And it's sealing on its own. I didn't have to intervene. And look at that. See how good that seal is? That's what you want. You don't want anything interfering. If there's any pockets there, you basically have to reseal it, like run it in through it again. So these feedback bags are they're pretty awesome. I haven't had any issues with them other than just having to do the manual cutting and all that stuff. I want to show you this real quick um, before we go. I was able to get, well, I've taken enough of that uh, 50 foot long uh, roll. There's enough off of it now that I can fit through the slot here so I can show you how this is kind of designed to work. So I stuck the roll in here so that's going to make things convenient. Because now it's going to hold the roll and I can just pull out bags as I want to use them. And I've pulled it out a little too far. Because what I want to do Let's pull that to the line, make sure it's centered to you. That's the other challenge. And then feed that down. So it's pulled to this line as well. There's a line right here to see where I can make cuts. So it's ready to go. We're going to go ahead and seal that. I'm just going to throw that down. It's going to seal and that's going to start. Okay, lift that and you see the seal. So now I can take this, pull it out until I've got the length of bag that I want, which is probably gonna be about like so. It's good, I'm just making sure everything's straight. And then I've got this cutter here, I'm just gonna run that across. Boom, there's a bag. Then it's already prepped and, and ready to go. I can seal it. Unseal it. I lift up a little bit, pull that out. Look at that. And we're gonna pull it out again. About yay big. I've got the blade here and we'll run it back the other way. Another bag. So this feature is where it makes sense to get the roll, uh, the rolls of bags because they're a lot more cost effective. They're cheaper. They're cheaper because they're factoring in your labor that you're going to have to do these cuts and all that. But the other thing is you can make these bags as small or as large as you need them. Like if I had a big piece of fish or something, I could cut a really long bag to put it like a piece of salmon or a fillet in there. 
and then seal it up. So it works works pretty well. He's been in the freezer for a little while now. I'm frozen. So uh, hopefully you found that uh, video helpful and uh, looking forward to getting some more peaches maybe next month. The peach truck's coming um, a couple times this summer so um, I guess that's it for now until next time. Happy gardening. Bye.